So let's talk about versioning, or rather what happens in an unversioned state. This is the default with the majority of MinIO buckets. When you write an object, let's say the data bucket slash cars.csv, well, the first time you do that, it creates the cars.csv object at that path. Every subsequent write operation to that same path, data slash cars.csv, just overwrites what's already there. Now, this can be helpful if you have data that's just constantly updated over time. Maybe it's just a simple list and you don't care about the previous state. You just need to make sure that whatever is being stored on Mineo is the latest of that object. But what if you need to retain the full version history? What if you need to make sure that the data you have is protected from things like accidental overwrite or modification? Well, that's where versioning comes into play. With versioning, we keep the full object history over any mutation, whether it's creation or deletion. And these are full copies of the object. It's not a differential based versioning scheme where it builds on top of the previous one and rebuilding the versioning state requires you to go object by object by object to put together what it is today. Every object version is a full copy, so it stands on its own. For applications that are interacting with a version enabled bucket, by default, they will retrieve only the latest version of the object. By latest here, I mean whatever was the most recently modified version of that object. So I could have 10 versions of the same object. Applications will only interact with the most recent version of those 10. Finally, delete operations have some special behavior. When you first delete an object, it creates something called a delete marker or tombstone. This is a zero byte file that is simply not returned by MinIO if an application attempts to list or retrieve the object. Applications can always choose to specifically retrieve all versions of an object, and we'll look at an example of that later, but the default state is that the soft delete looks very much like a delete. So what happens once we've actually enabled versioning? Well, to start, let's actually look at our previous example again. When an application performs the put object API at a specific bucket and path, if there is already an object at that path, by default, MinIO just overwrites that object. It doesn't really matter what the state of that object was before. It can even be a completely different file or structure or type than what is being written. The default state is to simply overwrite it with whatever the application has provided. But what if that's not your desired outcome? What if you want or need to retain the history of modifications to a file over time? That's where versioning comes into play. With versioning, any write operation, whether a new object or a mutation to an existing object, results in a new full copy of the object. With versioning, we can preserve the full file history of an object and protect against unintended overwrite or deletions. Applications default to the latest object version, meaning that you can have many versions of a given object, but applications access the most recently written one by default. That said, the various APIs typically allow you to list and retrieve specific object versions as needed. One special aspect is delete operations. When you delete a object, it produces a delete marker tombstone. This is a zero byte file that simply indicates to MinIO that it should not return this particular object for list or get operations by default. Again, applications can choose to list and retrieve older versions of that object but the delete marker acts just like a delete operation. Let's actually try this out. I currently have two buckets on my MinIO deployment. I'm going to enable versioning on this other bucket, data2. The command version enable will enable the versioning state on the specified bucket. And here I can see that I was successful in enabling versioning. So let's actually see what this looks like. I have a lot of versioned sample data here. I'm specifically going to start with the sensors.csv. So let's do the following commands. What I'm doing here is I'm copying the sensors v1.csv file to the MinIO deployment local on the data2 folder and I'm renaming it to sensors.csv. I've repeated the command a few times to copy the remaining versions. This is simulating the kind of operation where you are iteratively adding to a file, maybe invoices or IoT data or sensor data, where the file grows over time and you simply rewrite it to the specified path. 
what this looks like if I do MC cat is a long list of collected sensor data over time. Conceptually speaking, what's happening is that now when we run the put object API against this specific path, each time we write the new object, it gets written as a full new copy, and the latest copy of that object becomes the head or latest version. When I ran the MC cat command, it only pulled back the most recently written version of that object, not any of the previous versions by default. So I've written a couple versions of this object. We saw that when I ran MC cat, it retrieved only the latest version of the object. If I want to see all versions of the object, I need to tell MinIO specifically that I want to see them. I'm using the mcls command again, but this time I'm specifying this parameter, versions. When I run this, it returns all of the existing versions of the sensors.csv file that exist at this particular path. We can see that there's three files, each one larger than the next because the file has grown over time. Each file has a unique ID, and this unique version ID is how we can refer to the object specifically if we needed to operate on a specific version of that object. What's happening here is the application is specifying the list objects API, but with this versions parameter. This directs MinIO to collect all of the object versions at the specified path and return them to the application as is. We can get something similar using the MinIO graphical console. I'm in the data2 bucket, and I've clicked on the sensors.csv file. If I click this display object versions, it'll show all versions of the object, including which one is considered current. Now, let's say I specifically want to look at the contents of a sp single object. I'm going to need the version ID. Let's say the version ID from v2. And I'm going to run the same command I did earlier. I'm going to run the same command I did earlier but now I'm specifying a version ID for the object that I want to retrieve. This returns somewhat similar looking data, but now I'm only returning the data that is related to sensors.csv for this particular version, which is version two. If I rerun this command using an older version, the V1, you'll note that there's even fewer lines over time. This is how applications can choose selectively to list all of the versions of a given object or all of the versions at a specific prefix or bucket and then choose to operate on an older version of that object. When applications perform the get object API with a specific version ID, MinIO looks for any object at that path which matches that specific unique ID and then returns it to the application. So now we have our versioned data. Let's say that we actually want to delete the sensors object. Well, let's start with the standard command. You'll note that the output is a little bit different than what we would normally expect. Here, we see that we've created a delete marker for sensors.csv, and it's given us a, a specific version ID. Now, if I run mcls, nothing has been returned. It looks, for all intents and purposes, like there is no object left in this particular bucket or folder. However, if we run mcls versions local slash data2, you'll note here we have our delete marker. This is the zero byte delete marker file with a unique version ID that indicates to the MinIO server to not return this file for list or get like operations unless they specify some level of versioning parameter. Regardless of whether it's the CLI, the console, or the SDKs, the delete object API has effectively the same result. It, the MinIO server creates the delete marker, and as far as the application is concerned, the object has been deleted. So let's say now that I want to delete the oldest version of sensors.csv. I'm just going to use the mcrm command again. But this time I'm providing a version ID parameter. This directs the MinIO server to perform this removal operation, the delete object operation, on the sensors.csv object with version ID provided here. Here you can see that I was able to remove the object, and now if I run mcls, there are only three versions of the object remaining. 
I can actually do the same thing with the sensors.csv delete marker. And if I run ls, the delete marker is gone. And I can actually return the file as expected using a standard listing object call. So this is one of the things you can do with versioning and one of the protections that are in place is because deletes are by default soft deletes, unless you're specifying a version ID, you can do something similar to a delete operation by removing the delete marker itself, which is a unique object version. Again, going over how this looks under the hood, regardless of what the application is, when you specify the delete object API with a version, you are performing a hard delete operation. That object, whatever it is, at that version ID will be permanently deleted from the MinIO deployment. So let's just summarize one more time. Versioning is typically disabled by default. With versioning enabled, each new write to a unique object path results in a full copy of that object. Each version has its own unique ID which you can use for retrieval. The S3 APIs have version-specific syntax for granular object version operations. Deleting an object results in a delete marker tombstone, a soft delete. And applications read back the latest head object by default. Versioning again prevents accidental deletion or overwrites, and it's a key feature in data that requires retention or other versions of protection. 